All right, hey guys, uh, Dookie here from mb3media.com, No Budget Music Entertainment. We're live with Sean James from Sean James and the Shapeshifters. How's it going, y'all? You know? They just kicked ass. Hey, we had a lot of fun up there. It was a weird. It was weird for me because normally we play like 90 minutes, and so it was a 30 minute set. So we're like, all right, choose the best ones, just bang it out. Here we go. Yeah, that's funny because two of the songs I was familiar with you played. So I was like, all right, cool. So, hell yeah, which yeah. ones do you don't yeah, mind? Um, Hunger and uh, Delight. I've heard both oh, of them. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, that was that was pretty good. Um, all right, so we we're going to start off with Happy Birthday. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you kind of ruined my surprise. <laughs> uh, technically, your surprise is your birthday, but this is Hey, all right. I'm just happy to be here another year and be able to keep doing my life. Hey, hey, that's what I always say. People make fun of me for being old. I'm like, hey, I'm above ground, so I'm good. There you go. Yeah. All right. Um, so, growing up in Chicago, South Side Chicago. Yeah. I'm a big sports guy, so I got to know: Cubs or White Sox? Uh, Not really. You're gonna ask me this. No, no, no. I'm a Sox fan because of where I grew up. We all okay. flew the black and white flag, you know. Yeah. But when I, I, st I have a lot of friends, and my father was a huge Cubs fan, so. When I'm around him, it was all Cubs, Cubs, and then when I'm around my friends, it was all Sox. So yeah. I'm kind of split 50 50. I know that's not a good answer, but hey, it's National League. Cubs American have been around League. longer, but yeah. the Sox are more the underground. Oh, team, yeah. You know? so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you grew up, you, you started singing in church? Is yeah. Right? Yeah, in a Pentecostal church in Chicago, strangely. Normally it's a southern thing, right? Yeah. yeah. But it, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I grew up in a Pentecostal church, the thing that I connected with was the music. And then from there, parents took me to other sister churches and stuff and a lot in the black gospel community because they um, it was mainly because of their singing services and their music services because they were intense with it and they wanted me to get that vibe of it and that's where I learned to cut my teeth and learn to put the direct emotion and passion into music was through the church for sure. yeah if you guys haven't been able to see them live get out and check them out I'm telling you man I'm telling you just the energy man it was like all right some soul you went, you went to this, I mean, just the rock vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? I saw you throw up the horns a couple of times. Yeah, like, with yeah. the shapeshifters, we throw in a more heavy rock and roll vibe to the yeah. blues soul that we do acoustically yeah. as well. So it's, yeah, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's, it's unique, man. I love it. I love <laughs> Thank it. Thank you very much. You got, you got a fan in me now. Oh, uh, um, yeah. So you guys have, you've had songs featured HBO, CBS, Discovery. We've been um, super lucky and really fortunate with that yeah. stuff, man, because we're unsigned underground artists, mm -hmm. you know? And all those opportunities came straight to my email. So you can imagine, I'm just sitting there, and it was just, oh, I got a message from Sony. Oh, I got a message from HBO. Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's really good for us, because like I said, being unsigned and underground, you know, a lot of people have that mentality of um, selling out and everything. Yeah. And for me, I don't think that's really how I think of it anymore. When I was younger, yeah, it was a big thing. But nowadays, now that I'm the artist, actually providing for paying the money to do these things, you know, getting the exposure without a label, getting other people to pay attention to our music through TV shows, through video games and stuff like that, through those opportunities has been massive for us. Yeah. So it's um, it's changed my viewpoint on a lot, not just because it's helped us, but because, you know, I think in this modern day and age when music is all over social media and it's already on Spotify and all these other places, it's kind of hard to use the term sellout. I think if you were like endorsed by oh, yeah. like, you know, Nike or Gucci, <laughs> your songs on there, okay, yeah. maybe then. Yeah, yeah. But for, for us trying to get the music out, it's been a huge tool for us. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah even, even been uh, the PlayStation Blockbuster, The Last of Us 2. That's... That one was the biggest one, man. Yeah. And I had no idea. They contacted me three years ago. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell me anything about how the music would be used, what video game, the scale it was going to be used in until the trailer came out last December. Yeah. And it came out at the same time everybody else found out, I found out. Oh, wow. I had friends, family messaging me, did you know that yeah. you were on The Last of Us? And I was like, I do now. Yeah. Oh, so that was something like they contacted you and said, we're gonna use this song instead of, hey, write well, something for can we use this song? Okay, yeah, yeah. that's what I was saying. Yeah. Can we use this song and we're not gonna use your version? And I was like, wow, well, who's gonna be singing it? Yeah. It was my version of what I wrote, but not the one I recorded. Okay. So I was like, who's singing it? What version are they going to do? Like, it was it was a huge risk for me because I normally don't just get the music out before knowing what it's going to be used for. So at first I was really hesitant to letting them use it. And then after thinking about it, I was like, well, there's no reward without the risk. So let's take a risk and see what happens. Yeah. Might have been a little hasty, but now it's not. Yeah. I, mean, it was, <laughs> yeah. I approve of that game. And the way they used it was incredible. They did a really good job. And the girl who sang it like did a great version too. So I was stoked on it. So. Yeah. So um, I've heard you, you and the shapeshifters. I know you do your solo stuff. Yeah. And your, um, soulful, gritty. 
uh, heavy blues rock. I've yeah. heard um, you've been labeled as rock and alternative, alternative folk. What would you can? Would you just throw all those in there as one? Or you know, I, I put a broad for the acoustic. I threw a broad genre of blues, folk, and soul. And then when I get heavier into it, I'm like haunting folk, raw, authentic blues, like old gospel blues, like Sunhouse, Robert Johnson type stuff. At least vocally. And then the soul is just the gospel soul type thing. But it, it covers so many grounds, you know, like some people could say dark Americana, uh, a little bit of bluegrass influence. I just, I, I don't like to put myself in a box and yeah. do too many labels. Yeah. But it's, it's hard to pin down, even myself. I just take, I take influence from so many different things. And the shapeshifters are like the more heavy rock and roll blues, doom blues, kind of riff rock stuff. I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, you know, like. That's what makes it unique, man. Yeah, it's we take cool. from so many different avenues, so. Yeah. I, I would be, I'm totally cool with those descriptions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 just add more. Uh, yeah. I would have loved to seen it with them lights go. You could tell the lights were going, but man, those. That's you know, the thing you get playing at 1 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would have been more awesome. <laughs> uh, not that it wasn't awesome. It was no, no. Ass, hey, but, yeah. I would have liked it later, too. It would have yeah. been so hot up there. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. live. <laughs> All right, so um, so with the shapeshifters, uh, five five EPs. We have three EPs: the okay. bear, the wolf, and the hawk. Okay. And we have a covers, covers album, the gospel and then we have a full length, which is okay. the gospel. That's the full yeah. length. Okay. Yeah. Um, if if we have time, yeah. Um, we started with the wolf in 2013. Yeah, man. Um, that was five a, tracks. Yeah, started with the wolf, and the, you know all the they're part of a trilogy called the shapeshifter trilogy: the wolf, the bear, the hawk. Wolf was the first one. My my vision of that was to choose three different animals from the Native American myth of the shapeshifters, which most commonly are represented are the wolf, the bear, and the hawk, or eagle. And so I wanted to do a different genre and a different feel and a different story for each one. And the wolf is a story of a, a, a man who was raised by wolves but doesn't know that he's not a wolf until he gets older and kind of comes to terms with it. And as he's coming to terms with it, he knows that he can't change into a man, really, because he has the mentality of a wolf. And so he's this man coming to terms with being raised by these wolves and having that mindset and not being able to get away from it but not being accepted by either. So that's that's where it took off from. And that one definitely has a more haunting folk, folk orchestral vibe about it is the way I built it. And, um, yeah, that's that's the wolf for that one. Yeah. And then uh, that was in February. Then in June, mm -hmm. you ordered to drop the bear, the EP of the bear. Um, you, you touched on the wolf. Um, listening to listening to that one, I heard a lot of more violin. Yeah, like I said, the orchestral then, yes. vibe. Yeah. Then when I went to the bear, I could hear I think some harmonica and some more banjo. We went like like you said, you had more rootsy southern yeah. vibe. We yeah. recorded out in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas oh, yeah. in a in a cabin on the woods that was run by Solar Power. Strangely, oh, wow. uh, yeah, our friend let us use it. He has a solar power company, and I let him hear a few of the tracks we're working on. And he was like. Go use it, write it there. It's more in the woods. It'll give you the environment you need, the atmosphere. So that one has a completely different vibe. It's more like foot stomping, non-stop energy with violin, or not violin, no. harmonica, banjo, mandolin. That's the first one I've ever played slide guitar on. Um, resonator. And, uh, that kind of inspired the shapeshifter sound that we have now, the more heavy rock and roll thing. That was the start of it. We noticed after that when we were like, man, it's fun to play live, and the energy and the crowd reacting. It was a whole other level, so that's why we decided to continue that style. And then uh, January 2014, the Hawk came out. Yeah. It was was that keyboard piano? I played piano on it as a main instrument. Yeah. yeah. And I wrote it on there. I just wanted each EP to have a, a different feel about it, and uh, based on the instrumentation, the story, and the genre we chose to do it. In. Even the vocal styles are different in between mm -hmm. each EP. Like the bear is growling and more gruff and roaring. Yeah. Wolf is kind of more haunting and sad, kind of somber, and then the hawk is like a vengeance story about a hawk who comes home to find his uh, bird family murdered by this group of crows called the Murder, and uh, I kind of based it off a lot of different things, but um, that one um, is very different from the other two, uh, but I still love it nonetheless. It's just, it's probably got the most different vibe across the board from anything we've ever done. It's more orchestral, but in a more piano-based, um, I really don't even know how to describe it, to be honest. It's just a different feel. Yeah. Well, they all three sound great. Oh, thank you. Um, May 2014, 
four months down the road, the covers came out. And that was like, after uh, after we were on the road for three months. Yeah. We were doing these covers, and we throw a different cover in every time. And uh, at the end of that, we had known these covers so well after playing them three months. And we got home, and we were like, we have a week off. Let's put up our mics and just yeah. do. Let's record all the covers and call it the covers. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty much what it is. Like right there is a live album we do in our friend's living room. Put up mics and just recorded it. Right wow. there. So there's eight songs on that track. Which one's your favorite? Do you have a favorite on there? Oh, man. Um, that's tough. I would say The Love Me or Die by uh, C.W. Stone King. Because it was, uh, we took his song and we re-envisioned it. There's like a big chant in it that I really love. But man, there's so many good ones on there. You know, the Tom Waits one, the Otis Redding one. Uh, yeah, I'd say my favorite, the Tom Waits and the C.W. Stone King. Alright, then uh, moved on to the gospel according to. And this was kind of us coming into our, what we decided we wanted our first full length, kind of like our come out full length genre to be. So that's where we combined elements of really, was really inspired by the bear. Because that energy, that heavy energy, we noticed live, it would, when you play in a bar and people are drinking, a lot of times they don't want to hear the more soft. Yeah. But, opposite of that, when you play a house show, those kind of things are perfect. But with us touring more and more, we were playing more bars and more big venues and stuff where people I could feel wanted more energy. So that's why we directed our attention and songwriting to the more bear style. And uh, out came the gospel. And we put violin in it as well to kind of mix all those different things together. And that one had 10 tracks. Yeah. So uh, did I miss any as far as the that's it for the I know you got your own solo. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. We've put out like 60 yeah. songs over yeah. the past five years. Yeah. I was looking at I was looking at the dates. I was like, man, these guys are just, <laughs> just on it. I, I like mean, to work, man. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, growing up in Chicago, I was my dad was a steel worker, so I, at a young age it was all about work. You know, if you don't come home with a sore back, then how can you know you had a good day's work type of mentality? And because of that, I feel like it translated into my uh, musician lifestyle as, as I've kind of branched into it. You know, I like it that way. You know? yeah. I don't want to have, I don't want to be lazy. I want to work. <laughs> I like it. Yep, that's good, man. All right, just a couple more questions. Yeah, um, yeah. The video for the hunger from the Mary P. Was that shot in, in Arkansas or was that? Yeah, the remember one that you cabin said? I was talking about, the solar yeah. power cabin in yeah. the Ozark Mountains? That? That's it. Okay. That's yeah. where we wrote it. And we yeah. were there after we wrote it. We had a couple days off, smoking, drinking, having some fun. And um, our videographer came out just to kind of have fun with us. She was like, This is perfectly picturesque for what I just heard you guys record. Let's shoot a video. So she called one of her friends and we did it with two cameras on the fly. Just based on ideas coming out of our heads. The just guy who kills around. us, the crazy moonshiner, yeah, was yeah. a friend from a town over. Oh, wow. He said, Jason, come on out. And he was like, hell yeah, I'll bring a yeah. machete. And, <laughs> yeah. and it just took off from there. You know, yeah. there was no really big plan. Yeah. It was kind of, we were in the moment. And we just made it happen. Yeah. And that's why I feel like it worked. That raw energy is there. Oh, yeah. And it was just really honest and authentic. Yeah, it, it looked fun, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm moonshine drinking in there. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was we a had a good old time, for sure. All right, so out of all your solo work, all your, your band with shapeshifters, yeah. does any one piece of any of your stuff stand out to you at all? I would say, the, and not to, not, to, not to say that any are better than the other. They're all different. The one that stands out to me based on the circumstances we were in was the first album I ever put out, and that's Shadows in 2012. We recorded it. I just moved to Arkansas from Chicago, and uh, I just met this circle of friends. I started to get to know everybody, but I didn't have a band yet. I wrote these 12 songs, and I decided to record them, so we recorded them in this old 1930s house we were living in, and that's where I met all the shapeshifters, but we weren't a band yet. They would come in, and I'd show them the song I recorded, and they'd be like, could you put a layer on that? And they'd be like, I think so. And so when you hear harmonica, when you hear violin, when you hear all these other things on shadows, that was the start of my friendship with the shapeshifters. It was the start of us feeling each other out musically. And that one, because we did it very DIY, because it was super raw in my bedroom, that one stands out the most to me. That was where it all started. You know? So that's why I would say that. And strangely, it's our most popular release for being the most raw, the most like home recording thing. Yeah. So there's a vibe about that I feel like people can pick up on because of that. And like I said, not to discredit the other albums, none of them are better than the other. It's just that one really sticks out to me because that was the start of all of this. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Yeah.
Yep, it's moving, man. Best of luck to you. Thanks Thank for coming you. out. Thanks uh, for having me on. Uh, SeanJamesMusic.com. That's so it, it SeanJamesMusic.com. Check that out. If you guys haven't seen these guys live, get out and check them out now. This Bourbon Beyond Fest is hopefully going to stay. Hey, so I we hope to see you guys time. again. We'll be back for sure. Even if you know, even if not here next year for the fest, we'll be coming back there on tour for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We look forward to it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, man.